Spring 2024 is upon us and the 2024 cooling season is rapidly approaching or at least I hope it is. Today we're going to take a look at this Today we're going to take a look at this Maytag air conditioner. This is a Fetters product. The model number is M6X08F2AC. It's rated for 8000 BTUs and it's got about a pound of R22 refrigerant. I'm not sure exactly when this was made but I believe this is probably a late 90's or early 2000's product. It does have the electronics control set but it's very very basic and kinda rigid and unrefined. It also has remote capabilities but I do not have the remote as this was a curbside find and the remote was just not present. So this summer is going to be very equipment intensive. We're going to be taking a bit of a change in pace. Last year I did a lot of air conditioner acquisitions and this year we're going to kind of tone that down a bit and focus more on the equipment that I already have because I have this amazing library of interesting old unique equipment and much of it has never seen the light of day which is very terrible so we're going to try to change that so we're going to be doing a ton of clean and service videos a lot of equipment installs swap outs etc and uh, so in that spirit we're going to we're going to look at this one first because this is one of those machines that I got several years ago and have never had a chance to use this is a fairly run of the mill common machine oh, it's a fetters product well, I happen to like fetters products I think they're pretty good they're simple they're economical and they're reliable what else could you ask for so this one uh, is missing the side panels so the install is going to be a little bit tricky but we'll get it we'll get it in the window somewhere and then maybe good grief Maybe I'll try to find the remote somehow. Dare I say there might be one on eBay for fifty million dollars. So this machine is in pretty good condition. I actually have two of these. This is the better of the two. This was the first one that I found. I want to say I got this in 2018 maybe? 2019? Somewhere around there. Oh, is that a date on there? No, it's just a number. The fan information's the fan information's the fan information's the fan information's is it's a two speed, it's a 1500 RPM and 1100 RPM Class E. Calls for a 10 microfarads capacitor, 75 watts. It's a weird brand. Zong Sand Board. Oh, it's Broad Ocean. Okay, that's actually not that weird at all. It's pretty common. It's a cheaper motor, but it seems to be okay wiring diagram and then the compressor is oh, actually I have no idea because the information is on the other side it's a rotary compressor and that machine is actually in really good shape I don't think this is used for very long it's pretty clean coils very little rust on it you can still see through the back of it so this this one runs pretty good definitely low hours the other one I have is pretty high hours but it too also works just fine so we're gonna go ahead and turn this on now it has a 
built-in three-minute cooling delay and they put it on there like that's a great feature to have uh, who the heck would want to wait three minutes for it to work I've had it plugged in for at least three minutes so hopefully that will count for the three minute delay but it's quite possible that the compressor will not come on right away it's 72 degrees in the room so it should be warm enough for it to uh, call for cooling alright so we are testing at 118.7 the volts we'll go over to the amps the amps and let's turn this on now I always thought that this was very loud and this is very loud right now but I think that that's mostly condenser noise I've never been able to test this in the window before so we might find that once I put it in the window it's not intolerably loud it is moving a good amount of air but there's a downfall here and that is that the register does not point up and so there is definitely some not much because it's a pretty strong stream of air but there is some recirculation but at least three or four feet away from the unit I can still feel plenty of air moving so it's not too bad the fan is 1.10 amps 122 the watch with a power factor 0.93 that's on low on high it's 1.30 amps 147 the watts with a power factor of 0.95 it is moving a lot of air, I'll give it that much. But the noise level is just complete insanity. It does sound like a lot of that noise is in the back, so quite possibly it won't be so bad in the window. At least with these controls, they're not that bad because it responds immediately. When you press the button, there's the response and you can hear the relay clicking as opposed to something like where you press the button and it sits for five seconds and then it changes it's not instant but it's pretty responsive and it's, it's clear and simple so it goes all the way up to, let's see that button's not working too good It goes all the way up to 88 degrees. And if I recall correctly, it only goes down to 66. Yep, it only goes down to 66 degrees. Which is cold enough for me. I, I usually run it around like 75 or 80. But sometimes you get those damp nights where it's raining or something. And you need to lower it to get the moisture out. That wasn't too happy. We have to check the cap on this thing. That seemed to take a lot of power to start up. It sounds pretty copacetic, though. For a rotary that's been not turned on in probably about a year. There's no weird chatter or anything like there typically is. I just heard all the gas finish going out of the evaporator, so I think the charge is still there. There's plenty of airflow through the condenser. That's one of the things I like about these Fetters units is they always seem to have good airflow out the condenser and it doesn't run very hot, which is certainly a key to longevity. And the power draw, which I put up there, but you can't see at all, because of the, where the plug is. The power draw is going up, so the head pressure is building. We're allowed to run at 7.5 amps, so it can go up plenty from where it is. Alright, let me get 
the temperature meter out. Or we'll break the temperature meter, one of the two. Something's a little rattled somewhere. We gotta check into that. Or that could also be the um, the capillary tubes. We'll check it. It's already getting pretty cold. Yeah, that might be capillary tubes. Five point two five, five point four. There's two noises. There's one that's the metallic sound from here, which is the tubes. And there's another noise, something else is going to We'll figure that out later. I'm going to take the cover off and check it. Alright, according to our meter, the ambient temperature in here is 71 the degrees, the Fahrenheit. Let's see what we got coming out of the machine. So we're going to look for about 50 at least. And we're already there. Wow, not good. Getting a lot of heat out the back here. This sounds pretty copacetic. So these tubes right here, there we go, that, that, that quieted sound. That's actually very bad because what can happen is the tubes can actually wear through each other and create a pinhole leak. So we'll just take a tie wrap and stick that around there and solve that problem. It's not going to happen in a 20 minute test, so we're going to leave it alone for now, but that is something we have to correct before this goes into service. Down at 46 right now. We're up to almost 6 amps. It's nice and cold. And it's just satisfied because of the stupid recirculation issue. So I'll let it run for a minute. I bet it'll come back on. I let it operate for about five or ten minutes and now it's down to 38 degrees with 73 degrees going in so it's working very well as far as the power draw goes we have 6.69 uh, amps at a 7.5 allowed so it's actually already getting close to the allocated amount 700 watts with a power factor of 0.91 and a 37.6 degrees. So this is working very well. And I put this on here to stop it from recirculating. As you can see now it's staying on. So that might be a problem because that might result in uh, poor temperature regulation. So we'll see what we gotta do about that. Alright, let's cut it off and we'll hear the gas empty out of the evaporator.